So again, my name is Per von Menzel, and I'm the CEO of Farmnovo, a clinical stage uh, drug development company. Our vision is to improve people's quality of life through innovative, sustainable, and effective pain relief medicines. And today I'm very proud to present both our company and our lead candidate, PN6047, which is a phase two ready uh, drug for neuropathic pain treatment with clear first in class potential. <clears throat> in short, uh, Farmnovo develops novel drugs for neuropathic pain treatment. We have a team with extensive drug development experience. I'll come back to that later. And our lead candidate, as I said, has first in class potential. We hold patent protection in uh, all major markets until 2041, including extended, expected extensions. And we have just recently completed our phase one study, which uh, demonstrates that we are safe and well tolerated in humans. And now we are raising 180 million to finance the phase 2A proof of concept studies that are planned to start mid next year. Now, there is a huge unmet medical need for patients suffering from neuropathic pain. And um, the pain is persistent and many times unbelievably uh, painful. It affects up to 10% of the adult population worldwide and it's a major burden for society. Unfortunately, current treatments that are usually anti-epileptics, antidepressants, and originally not developed for neuropathic pain, although today approved, um, are only poorly effective in some patients and associated with severe side effects. Our solution, PN6047, is <clears throat> a quite novel delta opioid receptor agonist it effectively reduces neuropathic pain and specifically the symptoms of allodynia and hyperalgesia in animal models without any of the unwanted side effects related to conventional treatments. And uh, just to explain, allodynia is pain on the skin that shouldn't be painful and hyperalgesia is when light pain becomes severe. I'll come back to that later. So we have demonstrated that PN6047 actually both preclinically and now clinically is safe and well tolerated. <clears throat> uh, I will just briefly try to explain uh, what underlies allodynia. Um, there are two different kind of sensory nerve pathways, uh, both for touch and for pain. And in neuropathic pain states, um, caused by diabetes, cancer, uh, trauma, infectious diseases. Um, these get confused and we then come into a state of allodynia and hyperalgesia where actually the signals get confused and you get pain even from <clears throat> the light touch of the feather here on the hand. So in effect patients uh, face the fact that they can't even put on a shirt without terrible pain. Now. Delta opioid receptors are located on all the nerve pathways and uh, activating them with PN6047 tunes down the signaling in the neuropathic pain state and actually reduces significantly allodynia in neuropathic pain. So that ha that's how it works. What's unique then with PN6047? Now the first uniqueness is that it's extremely selective. So all opioids are not the same. They act on three different receptors. The receptor to the right, the kappa one, is of little interest to us. The receptor in the middle, the mu receptor, is the one that is mainly activated by conventional opioids. It's great for acute pain relief, but it also comes with euphoria, abuse potential, addiction, and uh, fatal side effects like respiratory depression. The delta receptor is remarkable because that actually produces uh, very good chronic pain and neuropathic pain, pain relief without the unwanted side effects related to the mu receptor. 
Another feature we've built into our unique uh, molecule is biased signaling. So when activating the delta receptor, we are primarily signaling through what we call the G protein route and not the arresting protein route to the right here. And that produces the effects we want to see. So the good pain relief, but also some positive effects like antidepressant effects, even anti-migraine and anti-cough effects. And we avoid the unwanted side effects of tolerance and seizure that is associated with the other pathway. So PN6047 is very selective and biased, and that's what makes it novel and different. Preclinically, we have demonstrated very high potency and efficiency in pain relief uh, in, in the animal models. Uh, very low toxicity in the four-week regulatory toxicology and a robust safety margin to move forward. And now let's come to the clinical development. We just recently completed our phase one, which was a relatively large uh, study, in including 112 subjects across 14 cohorts. And we have uh, seen no serious adverse events in the reports. It's just unblinded uh, one or two weeks ago. And um, therefore, we can conclude that it's, it's safe and well tolerated. Uh, in the final MAD cohort, the MAD4, we dosed uh, 240 milligram three times daily for five days. And we can conclude that at the exposure levels achieved at trough and at steady state at the end of this um, MAD4, we achieved a, an exposure level of 157 nanomolar, and that's maybe too technical. But we have to put that in relation to when we have seen maximum efficacy in animal models. And we saw that at the other line below at 50 nanomolar. So already when we look at the total exposure, not even the free fraction, we have a very good belief that we now have reached an exposure level that is predicted to be efficacious in humans and moving forward. So that's what I just said. The conclusion is that we're basically phase two ready. The strategy ahead is to uh, initiate a uh, proof of concept study in neuropathic pain for patients with mechanical allodynia starting mid next year. But preclinical studies also uh, show that we have potential in many other indications. And so second indications will be um, uh, chronic cough, which is actually hyperalgesia in the lungs, and opioid withdrawal syndrome. Uh, they have been selected based on the preclinical studies and they will be activated when funding is available. To maximize the probability of success, we will enrich the study by recruiting patients that have neuropathic pain and the symptom of allodynia. It's a classic crossover trial. We will uh, seek to have 40 valuable patients and um, treating them in a duration of 20 days. So again, we are ready to move forward. PN6047 is safe and well tolerated. Uh, it's validated by a lot of clinical um, key opinion leaders. Our study design and synopsis is ready, and uh, we have selected even the CRO, Worldwide Clinical Trials. The market is very large. Uh, the chronic pain market is uh, estimated to double in the next 10 years to 140 billion, looking at US dollars. Looking at the neuropathic pain segment, it's expected to reach 8 billion in 2027. And our segment, the first segment, is a quarter of that. So even this small uh, initial segment is, is a huge market. We have intellectual property rights until 2041 in all major markets, as I said initially. And now we are, as said in the introduction, targeting to raise money for the proof of concept study, the phase 2A. And following a successful proof of concept study, we target to seek partnership with pharma for further development and commercialization. And um, a potential deal could actually go all the way up to uh, over 5 billion sec. We have a lot of recent deals made by Pfizer, Eli Lilly, and several other companies in the last couple of years 
ranging from five to ten billion, both for phase one and phase two projects, actually. If we would not find the ideal partner at that specific time, we will, of course, continue development into 2B and finance that either in the private market or through an IPO. The team to make it happen is very experienced in drug development. All the people in lead positions have 20 to 30 years experience from drug development in pharma companies. And that means that we believe that this is a great investment opportunity. We target the major uh, unmet medical need. Uh, we have first-in-class potential. Uh, we are phase two ready. And I said, the team is there to do it, to make it happen. Is your question ready now as well? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Per? Then I wanted to start by asking, you said that you had key opinion leaders backing your um, your study. What do they say to you when you talk to these calls? Yeah, we have a series of key opinion leaders. Uh, one is uh, Andrew Rice uh, in the UK. He's worked with us for five, six years. And uh, first of all, of course, they validate the, the huge unmet medical need. But then uh, they certainly back uh, the mechanism we are working on. And we've also worked for many years with the University of Bristol and Eamon Kelly, who is I would say the world leader in biased agonism. So I think they, they back very well the probability of success with the high selectivity and the biased characteristics we have. And what does the competition look like in this area then? Um, there are no other delta agonists uh, in further development than we are. Uh, and, and I said, current treatments today are poorly effective and associated with quite severe side effects for many patients. So we then have to look at, of course, the scope of other mechanisms. And there are some uh, in development for neuropathic pain that are not delta agonists. People are trying from many different ends, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking about the financial situation. You're you're looking for you're looking for money, and the market is what it is. Um, and and I guess that builds into the strategy that you've chosen. But I have to ask, why why stop at phase two A? That's kind of uncommon. Um, and why not go all the way to phase two B? I think it depends. Um, what we have seen, and and we are talking to some extent, to pharma already. What we have seen is there's a greater appetite already now uh, even to acquire or license phase one projects. So I think the market is most likely there. There's a good example this year where Eli Lilly uh, licensed in Comfort Therapeutics. Uh, it's a phase one project for 630 million US dollars in, in total value. So I think that is ruling the game to some extent, that a lot of pharma companies seek projects. And there are very few phase two ready projects out there in the market. And so I guess your strategy built on some kind of expectations or even a sign that there is already some, some, some interest in your project. What can you talk today about the interest that you've seen so far? There is no clear um, things that we can talk about uh, in that sense. We will actually start to activate uh, pharma discussions next year. Uh, right now we are focusing on the completion of the phase one, um, moving ahead for the CTA for phase 2A, and the financing, which is of course also, uh, as always, a challenge. I think we have a question here from this lady. Um, for, is this a small molecular drug? It's a small molecule. And, and it's uh, uh, orally administered. Yeah, sorry I didn't mention that, but yeah, it's, no, it's orally uh, administered. And so far it has been in solution, but we are moving into phase two now with the capsule. So we have formulated the, the first solid. Yeah, okay, uh, great. Um, because my question is, um, uh, my knowledge about the, um, the receptor, the opioid receptors, um, I, I know, or as far as I know, that they are uh, broadly like located in the brain, or like that's how how I understood it when looking mostly on the other two, perhaps more on the uh, morphine and uh, and the uh, kappa receptor. Um, but like uh, in your beautiful uh, slide, it looked like it was located on the neurons in in like the periphery, like in in the body. Where is the receptor uh, located, broadly, that it is interacting with? 
Uh, the delta receptors are actually located all through your body, so uh, peripherally, in the spine, in the brain. Okay. And the early studies we made, we seem to have only a few percent brain penetration. Because that and, was my and, and our, question. And our action is really targeting the peripheral. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good question, thanks.